Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 538, The Thyroid Myth, That Doctors Still Believe. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating the symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin and Brett Newcomb are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, a book that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about the medical myth that um, doctors still believe that just taking a TSH blood level can tell you everything you need to know about somebody's thyroid. I have a personal interest in the thyroid because I have had hypothyroidism since I was 23. So that's way before medical school. And I had an excellent doctor who was actually a doctor of osteopathy and a, and a female, which was unusual for that time. And she diagnosed me by my basal body temperature, by talking extensively to me, by doing blood tests for TSH, but also T3, T4, uh, and for my lipids and antibodies. I'm not sure how she got those tests done because in those days that was it was very expensive and it was very difficult and took a long time to get the results back, but she diagnosed me as having low thyroid. My symptoms were my hair fell out or broke off. Um, my skin was very dry. I gained 15 pounds and I'm only five foot three, so that was huge. Um, I didn't eat very much and I mean, really dieted because in those days, Twiggy was the perfect woman. And so I, I literally was not eating on, on days and couldn't lose weight. I was tired all the time. I had to take naps every day. And I was in college. That didn't, that didn't go over very well. But uh, I also was miserable. I was depressed and unhappy. And those are all symptoms of low thyroid. So without the tests, she most likely could have told that uh, I had low thyroid. But she also did my vital signs, which were low blood pressure, low pulse, um, I was, uh, my basal temperature was 96, which you should be 97.9 if you're a female or above. So that was very low. I wasn't burning calories. So this particular doctor put me on a diet and actually, and also an exercise program, and she gave me thyroid. And the thyroid was specifically, I was specifically told to take it on an empty stomach and not to eat or drink anything for an hour afterwards. Well, that did the trick. It reversed everything for me. And it made my life much more normal uh, for being a college student. And I was grateful that she was the only doctor I had to see to get an answer. However, when I went to medical school, knowing all this about my own thyroid, I went to medical school and on um, endocrinology or the part of uh, your medical rotation that was endocrinology, um, I was taught this. You don't need to know much about the thyroid. If the TSH is low, then the thyroid is high. If the TSH is high, the thyroid's low. That's all you need to know, the end. Well, that's pretty simplistic. And that's exactly 50, almost 50 years later, what they teach medical students today. Nothing has changed, yet everything has changed in medicine. One of the reasons I believe that we only did TSHs as a blood test is that it was very expensive to do the a T3 and a T4, the two thyroid hormones, and to do lab tests was very expensive. They were done by hand, not a big machine like they're done now. So it was, it was a low volume, high cost item, and they the powers that be did not want to spend that kind of money on women. It's a women's disease. Mostly women get low thyroid when they're under severe stress or at menarche when they start having their periods after their first baby or menopause. Those are the most common times to get 
uh, to have a low or hypothyroid. Many women get hypothyroidism because their iodine is low. If they live in the middle of the country, um, north of Texas, and all the way up through Canada from the Rockies to Ohio, that's considered the goiter belt. And that's a lot of the country. And that means we don't have any iodine in our water or our ground. So if we eat locally, we're not getting enough iodine to make thyroid. So I'll talk about what makes thyroid um, in a little bit. But Dr. Barry talks about in his book these very same things that I learned in medical school, he learned in medical school, and he calls the lie in this chapter about thyroid, TSH can tell you everything you need to know about a thyroid. That's the lie. So the important things that I think that you should get from this discussion is that your thyroid is very complicated. It is not just a one-test deal. It requires your doctor, if you if he or she thinks that this is there's a problem, your doctor has to ask you all the symptoms of low thyroid and check your vital signs to see if your blood pressure, your pulse, and your temperature is low. And if they are, that's, that's common in hypothyroidism. And have some blood tests to go over before you are diagnosed with this. So even though you may have the symptoms... But if your vitals are normal, and if your, uh, if your lab is normal, they may not treat you. In many cases, the lab tests aren't accurate. And the lab tests have been um, skewed by the way the labs nowadays do this. We used to have a normal for T3 and T4 of 3 to 4.5, and T4 was 1 to 2.5. Now it is that they keep lowering the numbers so that fewer people have hypothyroidism. That's because people are, they're getting these normals, not from normal, healthy young people, but from all the sick people that come to their lab to get their blood drawn. And whoever has a thyroid, they dump into a pot and they use those numbers, sick people's numbers, to determine what's normal. That's not how you do a medical study. That's not how you find a proper range. In medical, in medical um, research, you have to test healthy people with no symptoms of hypothyroidism to get the normal range of the blood test. They don't, for almost every hormone, they don't do this anymore. They do the cheap way, which is just take the information they've got and put it into a bell curve. And if you're not way out here, then you're normal. That's not right. So you have to use the old normals, which is what I do when I'm looking at patients and trying to determine the disease. So one problem is we don't diagnose thyroid disease properly. We just use TSH, and therefore patients come to me after seeing five doctors who have told them they don't have thyroid disease, and they clearly do. They're, al you know, they're almost bald. They have no eyebrow. They have no eyebrows out here. Um, they have a goiter, or they're really obese. And they're really tired, and they're real, and they have swelling everywhere. They can't get their rings off. I do a body composition, and usually the body composition shows swelling, so a lot of fluid retention. Um, they're cold all the time, despite being obese. Um, they they have no motivation. They're foggy. They can't think. Um, the the extreme of hypothyroidism is called myxedema. Myxedema is, is a true condition. If your thyroid is gone and you're not replaced with thyroid, you blow up like the Michelin man and you go into a coma. That's how important the thyroid is. It is not something that you can just say, oh, okay, you don't have it, so too bad, you know, see you later. It affects, it affects your mind. It also affects your lipids. So many people who come to me have been put on statins because their LDL and their total cholesterol are high when all they needed was thyroid to drop their cholesterol. So thyroid actually helps your, helps your lipids in your body work and be burned up for calories. But people don't think about that anymore. They just look at the TSH. That is, that's a lie. You, TSH does not tell you what your thyroid is doing. Thyroid is a very complicated um, gland, and it's a very necessary one to have it work normally. 
Thyroid disease is a woman's disease, so it gets the lowest place in the priority list of doctors. I don't know how this happens in a day when 50% of us are women, but it is because old thoughts are still propagated at the medical school and residency level. Old sayings that make no sense, which is why this book is so interesting to me, because all the things he, he relates are things that I thought were really stupid lies, now I, I can call them lies because he does, that were taught to me in medical school and residency that I don't say over again. I do my research, look at my patients, and see if it is a lie or not. And, and there are many of them. So if you want to get to the bottom of this, then his book is a really good book to, to read on almost any subject of medicine. And the lies maybe you've been told about hormones or, or diet or drinking water with meals or, I mean, almost anything, he gives you the real details on that. Um, thyroid has to be taken in a specific way to actually get the thyroid into your body. And there's many steps, I mean many, of absorption in your gut and many things that can go wrong so that when you're taking your thyroid, you may not get the the actual benefit of it. If you don't, if you're taking... Um, uh, a proton um, pump uh, blocker, which is any of the antacids that you take for reflux, then that's going to affect the acid in your stomach, make it very low so that you can't dissolve the thyroid um, pill. If you um, have Crohn's disease, irritable bowel, if you've had a gastric bypass, if you've had anything done to your gut, then you may not have the bacteria it takes to help you absorb the thyroid that you're being given. Um, if you have, uh, if you take any kind of medication that affects your intestines, you may actually not be able to absorb the thyroid. And if you have gluten intolerance, but you eat gluten, then it may damage your uh, the villi in your intestines so you can't absorb the thyroid. In those cases, it's very difficult for us to treat or replace thyroid hormone. There's one drug called tyrosant, which is so exorbitantly expensive now that I can't even use it on patients. They can't afford it. So if that were affordable, that would be a good answer. It kind of bypasses all of these problems in the intestines so that you can actually uh, actually absorb it. Um, I believe that most endocrinologists are not the proper choice for hypothyroid uh, treatments. I, they follow their guidelines. The guidelines have been the same for years, even though I get their journals, and their journals say something different than their guidelines say. And of course, guidelines are just the lowest level of treatment that you can possibly get. So they're not actually reliable either, but doctors look at them and try to follow them to be good little doctors and follow the rules. They change all the time, but they haven't changed in a good way when it comes to thyroid because it's just not the top of the list. Um, the best thyroid replacement is determined by your gender. If you're a female, you're more likely to respond to a natural thyroid called armor thyroid, which, which has both T4 and T3. If you're a male, you're more likely to respond to Synthroid, which is a synthetic thyroid. Sy Synthroid or levothyroxine is what I treat my male patients with low thyroid, but there are many more female patients that have low thyroid than males. Obviously, this is not 100%. Sometimes I have to change people back. But this is where I start, and that's where you should start. If, uh, if you're taking thyroid and it's not working, you don't feel any different with your symptoms. Um, the thyroid glands right here, not up here, right at the top of your collarbone. And it is like a butterfly. It goes like this, and it crosses right here, and then it goes over here. So if you have a large thyroid, a goiter, you're going to have a big lump right there, and it's going to feel firm. It's not going to feel like your strap muscles for your neck. It's not going to feel, you're not going to be able to feel here. You're going to have a big lump there as well. So if that's the case, then that's a goiter. You probably need more iodine and, you, and or you need thyroid. 
So those are the two treatments for a goiter, and they should be given to you uh, if that's what you have. You may or may not have um, a thyroid hormone that looks normal on the current normals that are on the lab test, but in general, busy doctors just look down that line and see if everything fits into that line. They don't even look at the numbers anymore. So, um, I mean, I understand that. They're, they're stressed, but... The, the physiology of the thyroid is that your brain, uh, the pituitary that sits kind of right here, back about there, directs all the glands in your body. So there's a stimulatory hormone. That's the TSH. The TSH is thyroid stimulating hormone, and it comes from the pituitary gland, not the thyroid gland. So when you're testing the TSH, you're not testing the real gland production. You're testing... Like, it's like looking in a mirror at something instead of looking directly at the person. It is not always reliable. So that's one of the reasons TSH shouldn't be the only test. But the TSH stimulates the thyroid, and then the thyroid gland may or may not make T3 and T4, but those are the critical hormones. So that has to be tested individually, and we look for free T3 and free T4, which means it, it's without the binding that inactivates it. It's the actual active portion of the thyroid that works. So that's, that's basically the, the process. Then the thyroid in your blood, if you have enough, goes to your pituitary and decreases your TSH. So if you have enough, you really don't need your TSH. You're being given your thyroid by a pill. You don't need it being being uh, stimulated by the TSH. I advise my patients that I want their TSH when they are on thyroid to be less than one. And that's important. They should have their TSH suppressed because that's it's similar to giving estrogen. If your estrogen is high, then your, uh, your FSH and LH are low. Those are the two stimulatory hormones. If it's low, the FSH and LH are high. So we replace estrogen to suppress the FSH and LH. We do the same thing with TSH. So it's a very similar process. Um, it's very important that everyone who is hypothyroid be uh, have a sufficient iodine, and it's hard to get nowadays, so you have to take a supplement. The primary supplement out there is iodorol, which is a pill of two different iodines. And you take it every day with food, with a little bit of salt. I mean, a salty meal would be ideal. And uh, then the iodine helps you make thyroid, but if you're taking thyroid, it helps you have receptors in your cells to actually accept the thyroid. So you never really think about the fact that you not only have to have the hormones circulating, but you have to have receptors in on all of your cells to have enough iodine to accept the thyroid. So if you, we talk about what thyroid is, Thyroid hormone T3 is one amino acid, that's a part of a protein, called tyrosine. And T3 is three iodines. T4 is four iodines. So if you're talking about making thyroid in your own body, you have to have enough iodine. Lack of iodine causes your thyroid gland to fail. So lack of iodine can cause you to have hypothyroidism. Uh, and, and we took... For some reason, in the 70s and 80s, we took iodine out of our bread. We still have it in salt, but mi minimal. I mean, for some reason, that's been taken out. So we don't have a good source, especially if you live in the Midwest. If you live on the coast, it's in your water. It's it, When you walk on, at, on the seashore, you absorb it through your skin. So it's a lot easier to get if you're on one of our coasts, but not in the middle of the, not in the, middle of the country. Dr. Barry... Um, goes through all the lies about, t about thyroid and advises that you get a complete examination, go over your, your symptoms, and get your blood work, and that um, he gives solid evidence about why this is true. I'll give you, I give you the evidence. I've read all the, the articles about it. Research actually follows what I'm saying, but pr clinical practice by endocrinologists does not. Um, when you think that you've had 
low thyroid and the symptoms of low thyroid. And I don't want to, I don't really want to miss any of the symptoms. Um, it is basically you're warm when everyone else is warm. You're not cold all the time. Um, fatigue, weight gain, swelling throughout your body, memory loss, hair loss, eyebrow loss, dry skin, goiter, lack of, the, um, excuse me, constipation, uh, memory loss, confusion, uh, all of these things can be secondary, and high cholesterol, all those can be secondary to low thyroid. Um, I think I think that most doctors have stopped communicating with people because we only have because they only have a few minutes with their patients, and so they've just like decided to just look at a test and diagnose on that basis. But if you're not asked those symptoms, and if you're not, and if your vital signs are abnormally low, then you're not getting enough thyroid, or you're you're not absorbing it, or you're not able to use it because you don't have iodine. So many, it's very complicated. Many of these things have to be in place for your thyroid to work. Dr. Barry also recommends my book, The Secret Female Hormone, when it comes to the lies that have been told about estrogen and estrogen replacement, and also about not needing testosterone for women and not needing progesterone for women. So he uses my book as his homework for female hormones. But there's much in both books about thyroid that you can get information about, take to your doctor, and if that doctor does not listen to you, then you have to find another doctor. Thankfully, we're not socialized, and you have the you have the freedom to find a doctor who will listen to you. So keep your freedom. Don't get socialized. Don't agree with that. And actually pick your own physician so that they can listen to you and actually replace the thyroid you need. It will keep you younger, healthier, more productive, it will, and it will keep you off a, a multitude of other meds. So please read both of our books. I think you'll enjoy them, and we'll see you again next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.